Bill Gates is canceled. If you haven't heard, Bill Gates' wife divorced him, and Bill Gates is about to release the worst update of all time, Windows 11. <laughs> Just kidding. But today, I'm going to show you how easy it is to install Linux on your computer and get playing Melee Online with the power slippy. The fact that you clicked on this video probably means one of two things. One, you're just annoyed of Windows. For me, I was so fed up with the constant updates whenever I would turn on my computer or turn off my computer. Or two, you have an aging computer that you want to squeeze a little bit more performance out of. If your computer is just barely able to keep up with it, switching over to Linux might be the last push you need. Or you're Linux curious, which I really hate how that sounds after I said it. But yeah, so we're going to do a live demo of installing Linux to show you exactly what it takes to start playing Melee on a Linux operating system. Before you get started, here's a few things that you're definitely going to need. You're going to need a computer. I'm assuming you're starting from Windows. You need a GameCube controller. You also will need a GameCube adapter that lets you plug in your GameCube controller. If you're using a different kind of USB controller, that should also work, but you might have to Google how to get that one set up. You're going to want a blank USB drive. This is what we're going to use to put the Linux installer on so we can install it onto our computer. And that's pretty much it. You want to be patient. This isn't as complicated as it used to be, and it's probably way simpler than you'd expect. And before we get started, I just want to say, hello, I'm Cadence. I upload weekly to YouTube about Smash videos and other kind of fun stuff. So please, please subscribe if you want to keep seeing me upload stuff like this. And yeah, so here's a screen capture of me installing Linux, and I'm just going to narrate over the process. I'll even leave in the small issues I did have. You can learn from me. Okay, so what we're going to download is Pop! OS. Pop! OS is a Linux operating system that is super easy for new users and has a few advantages, which is why I'm going to pick it. Pop! OS is extra nice if you have a NVIDIA graphics card because there's a version of the installation that already includes the drivers, so you don't have to download anything. I don't have an AMD card, but I've heard that AMD is already much more supported on Linux and doesn't even need the extra steps to do it, so you should be good there. So what we're going to do is we're going to Google Pop! OS, and it's going to take us to the website. We are there going to click the download button and we're going to download the ISO. Make sure you select the one that makes sense to you. In my case, I have a computer with a NVIDIA graphics card, so I'm going to pick the one that has the drivers already installed. I am going to select the version named LTS because that one is the most stable and is less likely to give us any sort of weird issues. So after we download it, we now have to make a bootable USB drive. It doesn't have to be a big USB drive, but it has to be one that you're okay wiping the data with. This website has way better instructions than I can give, but I'm going to follow the ones here. For me, I'm going to follow the ones for Linux. However, you will find that there are instructions for other operating systems. It looks like there is a program already mentioned here that you can download that makes writing to the USB drive and making a bootable USB drive way easier. So. I'm going to follow the instructions because I'm already on Linux, but I promise you it's probably going to be easier from other operating systems. So according to the instructions, I am going to click on Disk Utility, and I'm going to restore the USB drive from the ISO I created. This will take a few minutes for me, and I will jump back in when it is done. Yep, so once we've created our bootable USB drives, we're going to look at the instruction to insert the USB drive and then reboot it. In my case, I was already plugged in, so I just hit restart on my computer. When you restart your computer, you probably need to do something to make sure your computer boots into the USB drive. For me, it involved hitting F12 on my computer, and then I was able to select the hard drive, or in this case, the USB drive, to boot from. I do have a silly issue here that I want to mention just in case anyone else had it. So when making this tutorial, I use a capture card to film this. Basically a USB device that lets me capture what's on the screen from a different computer. When I did this, the computer I'm installing Linux on thought there was like another monitor attached, but this second invisible monitor has some of the stuff on there. It took me a little while to figure out that my computer thought there was two monitors and that I needed to treat it as if it was just one. 
It's not going to be a problem for you unless you're making a tutorial, but in case you get stuck on the screen, this is what happened to me. Here, I'm going to go through the installer. In my case, I have a second hard drive that I'm just going to reformat and dedicate to Linux. I like this option because right now hard drives are kind of cheap and it's pretty easy to add an extra hard drive to your computer. However, I know that's not an option for a lot of people. So the alternative is you can take your existing hard drive and do something called a partition. This is basically dividing up your hard drive into multiple parts and you basically have a virtual second drive, but it's basically all in the same hardware. I am not going to give you instructions on how to do that. This is something you should definitely Google and look up just because it is a little bit different depending on your situation and I don't want to be responsible for something I'm not trying to do. So yeah, you kind of click through the rest of it and at the end, it's just going to say to restart. This can do a bunch of work, but eventually it'll need to restart to finish the job. So in my case, I have a few things, including the USB and my original operating system, but I also have the other drive, so I'm going to select it. Yeah, so afterwards, you have a pretty typical computer setup. I'm going to leave it mostly default for the sake of the tutorial, uh, like such as I have Ethernet, so I'm not going to actually bother setting up Wi-Fi. So once it's done installing, you are in your new operating system called Pop OS. It's going to be a little familiar if you use Windows before, but it's definitely going to be a little bit different. Clicking on the top left is like your start menu or menu bar. Pop OS comes with Firefox already, which is perfect for what we need. Pop OS also already came with NVIDIA drivers, so you're actually most of the way there. So what you do is you open up Firefox and you go to slippy.gg. You're going to click download for Linux. Once that is done downloading, you're going to go to your downloads folder and you're going to see your download. Here's the one weird trick with Linux that isn't obvious to me. You need to right click your download and then there's gonna be a properties menu. And in there, there's a checkbox to say, allow it to execute. You need to check this box. And then once you exit out of that menu and double click it, voila, you have Slippy on Linux. So you have to go through the setup for Slippy and you're gonna go fill out these fields. This is a demo, so I'm not gonna spend too much time I'm signing up for Slippy, but the account's free and it's pretty frictionless. Soon, you will get to a spot where you drag your very legally obtained ISO of Melee, this is basically your game file, and drag it onto the installer. I'm going to do a quick cut after I transfer my legit copy of Smash Brothers to my computer and I'll resume in just a second. If you don't have the game file, I recommend you asking a friend who does have Melee or has played it before. They could probably point me in the right direction but for reasons uh, legal and other reasons related, I can't help you. So once you've dragged it, you're in the main menu and you can click play. We do so, but there's an error. I freak out here. Don't freak out. Read the message in the bottom right. And it basically says you should go to the settings tab and click on the help tab. So we do that. And what do you know? We have a command to run for the error we got. So what you're going to do is you're going to click on the top left, open up terminal. Don't be scared. This part is not too bad. So after we've copied the command in Slippy, we're going to paste that command onto terminal and hit enter. It might ask you for your password. That's fine. Go ahead and enter it. It'll then ask you to type in Y to confirm. Go enter it. And then once it's all done, click launch again. And what do you know? It actually worked. Well, the controller's not working. I've left my stuff plugged in the entire time, but once again, in the help section, I realize there's a section specifically about controllers in Linux. Same deal, you copy and paste that command for the controller and then paste it into your terminal. It then says you have to run another command afterwards, like make it work. Um, and if it doesn't, restart your computer. So that's what I did. I restarted my computer, once again selected the right hard drive, in this case my Papa West hard drive, opened up Slippy in my downloads, click play, 
And there we go. Melee is working, my controller is working, and I can start playing people online. And I truly mean online. This is cross-platform. No one will know you're playing on Linux. You won't know what other people are playing on. Playing Smash Bros. on Linux is super nice. There's no frills, no annoying updates, no weird stuff that Bill Gates or Microsoft is doing. And some may say it's even more performant. Kandana mentioned the audio is slightly less laggy compared to Windows. But right after I was done filming, I unplugged the capture card, set my monitor to 144Hz, and it was super smooth. I've played on other kinds of Windows and Mac computers, and Linux was just as good. So yeah, that's all it takes to get away from Windows. I actually really enjoy it because I kind of just use my computer for YouTube, Twitch, streaming, playing Melee, Spotify. I would say most things are there. For gaming, I would say if you're into Steam games, you're totally good. If you're really into a game that's on a other launcher like Riot or Epic or like EA, there you might have some issues. That said though, I was able to get Sims 4 to work. So don't be surprised, it's a learning experience and don't be afraid to ask questions and I will see you next time.